Envelope tracking is a technology associated with RF power amplifiers. It enables considerable improvements to be made in terms of power efficiency. As efficiency becomes a much greater issue because of concerns about battery life and green operation, the technology is being used in everything from mobile phone handsets to cellular base stations and broadcast transmitters and many more areas as well. But despite the fact that envelope tracking is often thought of as a new technology, the concept has been around for many years. Envelope tracking was a technology first developed in the 1930s to address the energy efficiency problem of very high power broadcast transmitters. The earliest reference we can find to it is 1929 when a gentleman called Lloyd Barton from the University of Arkansas, who later went on to develop the Class B amplifier, used it to address the energy efficiency problem of a 500 kilowatt AM radio transmitter. The technology fell into disuse um, but was resurrected in the late 90s by cellular base station manufacturers looking to improve the energy efficiency of 3G base stations and is now finding its way into smartphones and other portable electronic devices. So why is envelope tracking used, particularly in applications like the cellular 4G LTE or long-term evolution systems? What benefits does it really bring? So envelope tracking has been used um, in a wide range of applications from, from low power handsets to higher power cellular and infrastructure power amplifiers. And in particular because it can uh, increase an average of say 20% efficiency for an LTE system up to more of the 40 to 50% region. And so it's half the amount of power that's being consumed into the transmitter compared to the previous technologies. So let's look a little more at why envelope tracking is needed and how it works. Typical amplifiers have a range over which they can operate in a reasonably linear fashion, but then they run into compression above a certain input level. The amplifier output cannot meet the demands of the input signal, and the output tends to level off. However, it is found that the best efficiency is gained from an RF amplifier when it is actually running compression. This is fine for types of signal like frequency modulation where there is no amplitude variation. For example, 2G GSM mobile phones use a form of modulation with no amplitude variations and they are able to operate in this mode quite satisfactorily and the RF amplifiers operated with a high level of efficiency giving low levels of battery drain. Although harmonics are generated by running in compression, these occur at multiples of the carrier frequency and they can be filtered out very easily using RF filters. Problems start to arise with some of the more advanced waveforms like OFDM. This signal format is used in 4G LTE, in later versions of Wi-Fi and other systems like digital television. OFDM or Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplex is used because it enables high data rate transmissions to be made where there are multiple signal paths between the transmitter and receiver, as occurs in a mobile environment for example. The transmission consists of a number of closely spaced carriers and it uses modulation schemes like quadrature amplitude modulation. These waveforms have an amplitude element to the modulation and this needs to be preserved. To achieve this, the amplifier must be able to accommodate the peaks without distortion. In turn, this means the signal must be within the linear region of the amplifier and this reduces the average power level the amplifier can accommodate. In fact, the peak to average power level is key to the efficiency levels that can be achieved. As an example, we have seen the peak to average power ratio increase significantly as mobile phone systems have migrated from the basic 3G UMTS through HSPA to 4G LTE. The problem with high peak to average power ratio waveforms is that the RF amplifier has to be provided with the power to accommodate the peaks and only use this capability for short periods when the peaks are there. The rest of the time this power is dissipated as heat which means the amplifier runs at a low efficiency level. Would it not be better if the amplifier was given the right voltage to handle the amplitude of the waveform at any given point? In this way, envelope tracking is effectively a power supply technology, 
one in which the power supply is able to provide exactly what the power amplifier needs rather than what the power supply wants to provide. So how do we achieve this? Let's look at the block diagram of a typical transmitter system. Here we see the RF generator feeding a pre-amplifier which then drives the final amplifier. In turn the RF amplifier obtains its power from a fixed voltage supply which these days is usually a switch mode power supply to ensure the best efficiency. In a little more detail we see that for data transmissions the RF generator normally takes in I and Q signals which it converts to an analog form. It filters these signals to remove unwanted high frequency elements and then mixes both I and Q up to the required frequency where they are summed. It's worth noting that the RF preamplifier has a variable gain this is used in cellular systems, for example, to ensure the handset transmits the right level to be received by the base station. In an envelope tracking system, it's necessary to generate a signal that represents the envelope to control the supply or modulator. The chain consists of several circuit blocks. The first block generates the basic signal. This is created by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the I and Q signals. Next is the preamplifier gain matching. This is used to accommodate any RF preamplifier gain changes that may occur. Following on from this is the envelope shaping. This is the key circuit block and it is needed because there is not a linear relationship between the optimum amplifier supply voltage and the power output needed. But more of this later. The post envelope gain and offset is used to accommodate any offsets and match the gain of the system to achieve the right levels to control the supply. Finally, the digital signal is converted into an analog format and it's applied to the control terminal. So to see how the right shape is achieved for the control waveform, we need to look at the RF amplifier performance. Here are curves for different voltages and it can be seen that there's a maximum efficiency point for any given supply voltage. These maximum efficiency points can be taken and plotted on a graph showing the gain and power output and then the actual supply voltage and power output curve can be derived. These figures are typically entered into a RAM or ROM that's used to give the correct relationship between the baseband I and Q signals and the required supply voltage. Altering the relationship of this curve can give the amplifier different properties. For example, a constant gain curve may be needed rather than the maximum efficiency. And this gives a lookup table curve that follows a different contour. So what about the envelope tracking power supply? This has some key requirements. First, it must have a very wide bandwidth. It must be able to track the RF envelope. Typically the bandwidth of the supply should be around two to three times the bandwidth of the modulation. This means that a 4G LTE system can require a bandwidth of around 50 MHz. The supply must have a very low noise output. Any noise on the output will be modulated onto the signal and this can give rise to wideband noise which could fall into adjacent channels and interfere with other users. And for frequency division duplex systems, it could even cause noise in the receive band, masking the wanted received signals. It must have a high efficiency, otherwise the gains of using envelope tracking will be lost. And the supply must have a low source impedance, and it cannot allow capacitors on the output, otherwise the high bandwidth will be compromised. Another key aspect of the performance of envelope tracking systems is the alignment between the control signal and the RF envelope. Good tracking alignment will mean that the control signal and the RF envelope are synchronized. Poor tracking will mean that the peak of the RF envelope will not occur at the same time as the supply voltage peaks. This occurs primarily as a result of delays in the filters in the two signal paths. To ensure that the two signals align properly, a delay balancer is introduced where the two signal paths are split. This is optimized to ensure the delays in each path match and the two signals are fully synchronized. So how does envelope tracking work in practice? Let's have a look at a system being tested in the laboratory.
On our application board, we have the envelope tracking modulator, of course, that uh, requires uh, a, a differential analog input signal from a baseband in the real application. But in, in this case, it's going to get this, its uh, uh, input signals from the signal generator. Uh, and the modulator is driving a multi-mode, multi-band PA, as well as two satellite PAs on, on the same uh, PCB. Uh, of course, the PAs will need the RF input signal. Again, this is sourced from the same test equipment uh, that provides the envelope uh, input to the modulator. And we have some load and power measurement capability at the output of the PAs, and we're using an oscilloscope to monitor the, the signals uh, out of the PA and also out of the modulator chip. So right now we're looking at the test equipment that generates the signals for the modulator and also the RF signal. So what we see here is a basic block diagram of the, of the signal generation uh, with a block for the modulator. And here we can set the gain and offset parameters for the modulator. Uh, and also on another screen we can set the, the delay uh, between the envelope and the RF signal. And I'll show you later what effect this has on, on the system. And also, uh, again, another screen, we're loading the so-called shaping table, which basically determines the relationship between the instantaneous RF amplitude and the envelope voltage out of the modulator. OK, so right now we're looking at the, at the signal waveforms on the oscilloscope. The blue trace is showing a sample of the RF output signal from the PA. And the yellow trace is the output voltage from the modulator, which is effectively the same as the supply voltage for the PA. And we can see uh, one of the basic ideas of envelope tracking that the supply voltage is following nicely the, the modulated amplitude of the, of the LTE signal. Uh, what I'd like to demonstrate now, if we're changing the mean power of the RF signal, then the, both the RF amplitude and the supply voltage to the PA will be scaled in a synchronous manner. Okay. So. And another basic thing that we can demonstrate with this setup is that uh, the, the importance of the exact alignment of the RF amplitude signal and the, and the envelope signal from the modulator. So what I will do now is, is alter slightly the, the relationship in time between those two signals. And what, what we can see on the oscilloscope is that the that they, they basically get these two signals get misaligned. And now, if we look at the spectrum analyzer, we can see the effect of that misalignment on the spectrum, uh, which is basically a much uh, worse ACLR, much worse uh, linearity. So, are envelope tracking systems only used to improve efficiency? Apart from the improvements in efficiency, we've also seen other benefits through using ET. RF performance is improved through increasing transmit power for a given PA size, a better performance into a load mismatch, and also the ability to linearize the PA through a software-defined shaping table. So in summary, envelope tracking is a power supply technology. It matches the supply voltage for the RF amplifier to what it needs so that it can provide the output power at any given instant. It improves efficiency, reducing running costs and increasing battery life. It's used in many applications and increasingly in smartphones where efficiency and battery life are of great importance.